Hi, in this video, we're going to go over six major forms of scientific evidence or forensic evidence or CSI. However, uh, you want to phrase it. CSI right now is the way people call it because of the popular TV shows. Um, one of them is fingerprints. Um, you know, they can uh, dust a sub uh, area for fingerprints, lift a print, and then compare it to your fingerprints. Now, um, what's interesting is uh, they, they look at the number of common ridges and, and points, but what is interesting is there's really no standardized number of identifying marks you need to make um, in order to have an identifiable print. Um, and I know that what NOPD uses in New Orleans is actually more stringent than what the FBI uses. So there is a little bit of a gray area. In a fingerprint case, you know, normally it comes down to the quality of print that was lifted that will determine whether or not that there's a match. Uh, the next is DNA. And um, this is very interesting. There's, there's more science that comes involved all the time. So it's always good that you get an expert involved. But I will say this with DNA, um, when they, if they were able to lift up a profile, then what they're gonna look at is, it, is it one person? If it's one person, they can make a match. If it's more than one person's DNA in there, that's a mixture. And a mixture, they'll never be able to make a match. Um, all they can do is say if you are included or excluded. That's it. So if you got a mixture, they're not gonna say it matches to Andre. They may say, hey, look, Andre cannot be excluded. And then the question is, are you a major contributor to the mixture or a minor contributor? Um, and so uh, that's always important. Now, again, even if there is a DNA match, how the DNA got there, when it got there, and under what circumstances could be um, the issues that are litigated. But in a DNA case, you're, you're best served by going to get an actual expert consultant because the technology and refining uh, DNA uh, changes all the time. Next is blood splatter. Um, this is used in some cases, in some cases it's not. Um, I'm not even certain this is an established science, but basically if you've seen like the show Dexter, um, he was really good at blood splatter, right? He's a serial killer who worked for a crime lab in Florida. But uh, anyway, you know, you shoot somebody, you know, projectile's gonna go through their body and blood's gonna splatter. You stab somebody, the actual cut's gonna cause stuff, the knife going back up, it's gonna splatter. And, and you try to look at concentration of blood, the direction of flow, to kind of get an idea as to what happened. That's in essence what a blood splatter expert will do. Um, one that is uh, always used in a criminal case is a forensic pathologist, and sometimes a pathologist is a defense attorney's friend. Um, this was the person that did the autopsy of the dead person. Um, they're gonna talk about, with like gunshots in particular, they can give you distance. You know, based on the markings on the wound, they can tell you if it was a contact shot, a close shot, an immediate shot, right? Um, they can also um, look to see if there was defensive wounds on somebody. So if there's a claim that the victim was fighting off, but there's no defensive wounds, that may be something uh, that is important to know. Or if the victim has gunpowder on their own hands and you're trying to say, well, they shot at me first, those are all things that pathologists can testify to. Um, they can also, obviously, they testify as to the manner of death and, and how the person died. Um, in rare instances, you may be able to show that the person died of some other event other than what you're claiming happened. But um, anyway, that's there. Um, another good component of the um, pathologist exam is the, uh, the blood sample. You want to know if the dead person was on alcohol or drugs or a combination of both. And sometimes that explains their erratic behavior and aids in a defense. The next one's a handwriting exemplar, and um, you know, actually a jury can take notice of someone's handwriting similarity to a document, but there are experts um, that will get the person to write out um, a bunch of letters and words, and they'll compare how they make their L's or H's or whatever to the document in question and give an opinion. So hey, this is likely written by the same person. Again, um, you know, there have been folks that have not been qualified as an expert based on their training on that. And again, the jury can make their own assessments too. Um, and the last one that's kind of pretty cool is ballistics. I actually think ballistics is one of the more reliable sciences out there. You know, when you fire a gun, it's gonna leave a couple of distinct impressions. The hammer pin striking the bullet is gonna leave a mark on that. So if I get a casing and I have the weapon recovered, well, first of all, I just have the casing. I can look at multiple casings 
or even from the same caliber of bullet, and I can determine they were fired by the same weapon by looking at that strike mark. Now, if I have the weapon, I can fire a test bullet, compare that test bullet to the casings I recovered to determine if the casing that I have from my crime scene matches the gun I recovered. Same thing with a bullet. As the bullet's going through the barrel, that barrel's gonna leave an imprint on the bullet. So I can look at a couple of bullets and I can determine if they were fired from the same weapon. And if I get the weapon, I can fire a dummy shot and compare the two bullets to see if the bullet recovered from the scene matches the gun that was recovered. So that's pretty fascinating. Um, and that's something that you'll see in a lot of uh, homicide cases. So there's six major types of forensic evidence. There's a lot more. There's arson investigations, hair fiber, glass. I mean, all sorts of things, tire tracks, footprints. Um, but these are the major ones that I see um, in murder cases that I deal with, all right? Uh, any questions, you can email me, andre at manassangill.com. I'll have a link at the bottom. You can also call me at 225-927-1234. Thank you.